ceasefire. And we'll see what the Taliban do after that. They're insisting they're not the same people anymore. They're different. It's been 20 years. Things have changed. I don't know what deal was made between um, Trump and the, the Taliban. And uh, Putin, I don't know who got what in this whole elaborate scheme where the Afghan people were left out. I'm now going to add some green tea to the boiling water. My water is boiling. And, you know, I don't really have a recipe. It's shy. I want it to be strong. Like I said, we call it Afghan Red Bull. So I'm going to make it fairly strong and then I'm gonna let it steep for a little while. Um, the other thing I'm making is chippy kebab. And in here, it doesn't look so appetizing, right? but is uh, two pounds of ground beef. I ground up very, very finely two onions, garlic, and some uh, herbs that I had in my garden. I didn't have any cilantro, which is weird, right? I know, but I used basil, oregano, and a bunch of other herbs, um, and I ground it so that the, like everything becomes kind of liquidy because the liquid is what marinades the meat. Um, and interestingly enough, this is just boiling, I don't know if you can see it, it's a lot of tea. We're gonna let that really steep. Um, so, chaple, chapal, chaplaka. I don't know, maybe somebody else who knows etymology of Pashto can, can tell me something. Oh, I have a microphone here. Um, but, okay, so, I don't know if that's on correctly, but whatever. Chaplaka is a sandal, right? It's like a flip-flop or whatever the thing is that your mother would throw at you from across the room. Anybody who had their mother throw a Dr. Scholl or a Chaplaka at them, wave and say hello. Um, but Chap means quiet. Um, and Chaple is the, the sound that you make when you make the kebab too, right? Chap, 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 chap. So it's basically like an Afghan hamburger. Um, we fry it of course, because we love to fry things. But I'm very interested in chapalacha. <laughs> chapalacha. That's the other one. Chapalacha means a smack, right? Chapalacha. So chaple is like a fairly harsh word. Um, and when we say chap, when we say quiet, we, it's like be quiet. It's not like, oh, that person was so quiet. That's like aram, which means calm. We say chap, which means shut up. Um, and so chapli kebab is like, <laughs> I can't see it's getting, which means footwear. Yes. Same. It's footwear. It's chaplaka. And our moms would say, or chaplaka, which means I'm going to smack you or, you know, here's my sandal. Now my mom never did. Love you, mommy. You didn't do anything like that ever. Khalagan, don't say that I did. I said that my mom did it. We all know that my mom didn't. Yes, you say chop to be quiet. That's very true. Okay, so um, my tea has been boiling for a few minutes now. I'm going to add some milk. You can add whatever milk you want. I like almond milk. And we're going to let that deep in here. I have to admit to being frequently disappointed when I do um, these lives and I, I haven't really been doing them because uh, people are busy. I know that people get really super excited and they're like, oh, yay, that's great. And I get a ton of retweets and you know, whatever. And then nobody shows up or very few people show up. And I'm so thankful to you guys who do show up. But um, it says something about where people's priorities are. I'm more than happy to answer any questions. If you have any about Afghanistan, that's what I was here for, to discuss it, um, to see if anybody wanted to know or hear anything. Um, and I have my friends with me here, and that's even more important than trying to spread any information or knowledge, because if people don't want it, they don't have to have it. And most of the time, people don't want it. So my tea is going to boil. I am going to add, this is cardamom. I'm going to put it in my, what is this thing called? 
what is it? I don't know what this thing is called. Uh, mortar and pestle? Mortar and pestle. And I'm going to... What we actually do, I'm going to be honest with you, we take the, the cardamom and we bite it with our teeth to release the... We don't use no stinking mortar and pestle, so... I'm going to drink it. It's going to go in my mouth. I have a star anise here. I'm going to drop some of that in there. I'm not going to use this because why dirty up more things. And then I'm going to throw part of a cinnamon stick in here. And what I use to sweeten it, now look, don't ever, ever, ever give, yes, like masala chai, that's exactly what it is. People, chai that is not sweet. You can give them chai, like green tea or black tea that's not sweet, that's fine, that's fine, but never give them this unsweetened. I mean, unless you don't like them, and if you don't like them, my suggestion is you give it to them like this and tell them that this is how we drink it and see what happens to them. I like to use jaggery um, to sweeten my, my, my milk tea, my chai, my sugar chai. I think it adds a really nice depth of flavor. You can use any sugar you want. You can use fake sugar if you roll like that. This, um, when I was um, eight, I'm gonna start to cry again, the, the Soviets came to Afghanistan, just so I give you a little bit of history of Afghanistan. I was eight years old and I was in Afghanistan at the time visiting. My jaggery is very hard. I'm going to throw this whole thing in there. It's going to be so sweet. Um, and we had to leave the country because the, the border was closing and um, we never went back. And so this idea that somehow this is a 20 year war or a forever war or, oh, you know, why were we in Afghanistan in the first place? We should never have gone. Uh, the Afghan people have died for America. Um, my relatives have died for America for the proxy war with the Soviets so that you could defeat the, uh, the Soviet Union and win the Cold War. And that happened on the backs of Afghanistan. Brown sugar, yes. Very good, same, it's the same sort of concept of that really nice depth of flavor. So for most people who like to talk about Afghanistan, they think that all of this started in 2001. And that's just not true. Um, this started in 1979 and the US backed the Mujahideen. The U.S. wanted to fight this war against the Soviets without having to put any boots on the ground themselves or put themselves in harm's way, and they did not. And I talk about the U.S. as if I'm not a part of it because I don't really feel like I'm a part of it, and I think a lot of my Afghan brothers and sisters right now feel the same way. A lot of us have fought very hard for this country. Um, you know, uh, people joined the military. Um, I became an attorney and I try to fight for civil rights for people in this country. I try to seek out justice and fight against injustice. And at the end of the day, America does what it does best. And that is it abandons uh, people when it's no longer convenient for them or it's not working out for them. And this idea that, you know, so many Americans died, not one should have died. This is true, not one. But why did so many Afghans have to die? That's not a question that an American will ask themselves. And I, I can't figure out for the life of me why, other than it's so safe here. Or so you believe it's so safe here. Um, black America would tend to differ and disagree with that statement. But this idea that this all started in 2001 and it started with George W. Bush and he shouldn't have gone and he shouldn't have done this. What gives Americans the right to say so many ignorant things so frequently? And so I didn't listen to Biden's speech because I know who he was playing to and it wasn't to me and it wasn't to the people that I love or that I care about. Um, it was to other people and I don't, I don't know who those people are. Uh, it's not true, I do know who they are and it saddens me. But this is my tea. I need a spoon, I need to stir it. I don't have a clean spoon. This is the only clean spoon I have. I told you 
on Twitter that um, my kitchen was as messy as my heart is right now. But um, this is my shir chai. The real way we make shir chai in Afghanistan, okay? If you see, we have a, a pink tea. Shir chai is actually the word shir chai, which means pink, right? And pink is the name for shir chai, which is milk tea. And the way we make it is we add baking soda to it. And the baking soda and the heat, and then we aerate it, turns it this beautiful uh, pink color. And then when you add the kind of dark purple red milk, that you, tea that you have created to the milk, it turns pink and it's so lovely. There are other forms of tea, Kashmiri tea, which is also a Kashmiri pink tea. I'm just going to talk about tea right now because <laughs> I'm going to talk about um, um, I, I'm going to talk a little bit about tea. So Kashmiri pink tea has salt in it. It's a it's a salty tea. Um, it's also very very lovely. We, this is mostly like dud patia, which is just like milk tea. It's a very plain, it's masala because it's got masala, which means spices. Um, but, you know, it's definitely better if you use, if you like milk, you should use milk. We also make clotted cream. Um, and so I don't know, did I make clotted cream on this channel before? I may have, I've made it once. It's a lot of time and work for, um, for a small amount of reward, but it's so good. And we put clotted cream on top of this milk tea. Now, the longer you let this sit and steep, the stronger it'll get, the better it'll taste. But I need to move on to the next um, item, which is our, I don't know why that keeps turning off, which is our chipsy kebab, okay? And I'm gonna teach you more words, all right? So I'm gonna put this over here. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to wash my hands. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go over here and wash my hands. Okay. Don't look at my kitchen sink. It's very messy. It's where we hide all the bodies. Okay. I miss you. I miss you guys. Okay, so now we have two pounds of ground meat. We have the onions and the garlic and the herbs that I zhuzhed up in the zhuzher. Love you too. Um, uh, and I have, uh oh, how come this is not? I'm having issues. I'm having issues. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the spices to this. Remember what our spices are, right? We have turmeric. Got to add the turmeric. And um, you all know how this works. Add as much as you want, right? I'm going to add the paprika, the coriander. What else are we adding? Cumin. Of course, we don't go into an Afghan kitchen and not add coriander, cumin, and turmeric into things, right? Come on, we're not, we're not actually savages. Not actually. And ginger, why is my ginger so chunky? My ginger is so chunky. Okay, ginger. And Aleppo pepper. Syria, Aleppo. Another country, America, nicely destroyed. Yay! I mean, let's not blame it on America, right? Let's not blame anything on America. In fact, today, the only person, the only country, the only group that was not blamed, cloves, in what? What am I putting cloves in? In my chipotle kebab? Um, tell me, do I put cloves in my chipotle kebab? I don't put cloves in my some Okay, I'm gonna be honest. Sometimes I cheat and I just take like my spice mixes. So I have the chaad masala, which means four spices that we use for rice. Sometimes I throw that in there. Um, sometimes I use garam masala if I got that. If I'm feeling a little spicy, I'll use hot curry in here. It doesn't matter. Look, the idea is what do you feel like eating? How do you want it to taste? Put that in there. I don't add cloves to this. 
I never do. Um, I think you can. I mean, I'm sure you can. Uh, and in fact, I have them right here. I can add some. Let's try it. Let's just throw it in there. Why not? Right? Let me get my my clove thingy my jigger. Voila. Let's do this. I had the clothes out for this very reason. See, this is Kismet, right? Do you all have Kismet? You know, Kismet is your fate, right? We say that everything is ordained, right? Um, believe in God, but tie your camel. And so it was Kismet that you said clothes and I had the clothes out for the chai, but I didn't use them there. Okay, now, I also need some flour and maybe my trusty assistant can get me a little cup of flour because this is very liquidy right now and maybe put a little cup of flour. Hey, assistant. This is listening, the videographer. <laughs> videographer, producer. So, okay, let's talk more about, yes, just a tiny little like two tablespoons of flour. Okay, so here's the thing about um, being from Afghanistan, okay? Like many people, when I grew up here in America. I did not want to be from Afghanistan. It was very embarrassing because I was brown. I was Muslim. I was not any sort of standard of beauty, right? Um, and so it sucked. I wasn't allowed to do anything. I wasn't allowed to go anywhere. I couldn't go to, oh, I couldn't go to parties. I couldn't go to football games. I couldn't do anything. It was really, no, Spider's not here. Spider's upstairs. I don't know where he is. Why is he not here? What's he doing? He's working. Oh, wait, where did he go? That's Justin. He does my video stuff. Spider actually reviews all of this. So when the finished product that you guys see, he actually um, is the one who uh, finalizes it. So it's like a whole big family affair. Okay. So I'm going to add oil. Oh, you know what I didn't add to my chipotle kebab? Guys, namak, salt. I got it right here. Now don't be shy with the oil. These are some fried hamburgers, okay? Okay, so we add salt. And remember, salt means namak, right? And namak is that, uh, what is that, je ne sais quoi. It's that, it's that essence. It's the thing that gives everything life and taste. You know, I've been um, really trying to immerse myself right now in my Afghan people. Um, and, uh, you know, people have been saying that as long as there are Afghans, there is Afghanistan. And I think that's so true because while we love our land so much, right, we really... We really love it, um, and uh, but we're Afghan, and it doesn't matter where we are. If we're here, if we're there, um, ah, what's cooking is chapli kebab. Hamayun, welcome, welcome, welcome. My family is here, so we're making chapli kebab. We just made chai, shir chai. And we're gonna drink some of that. Um, so, um, yeah, I mean, we'll be okay, right? Like I said, you hear different things. And the only thing that we want here in the diaspora, those of us who have come to safety long, long ago, we remember to be grateful and to, <laughs> who's, who doesn't love chapli kebab? Deep fried hamburgers? With all of the spices, I mean, it's the greatest thing ever. But, you know, you have to always remember that you are, you are grateful. And then you think about why. You know, why are we here? Why did we get to be here in America and other people are there? And what can we do with that, right? Like, what are we doing? Are we squandering our time here? Are we spending it usefully? Um... Okay, so this is the chapli part. Okay, you hear that? Who here has had a chapalacha from their mom? And then their mom made chapli kebab. Hamayun. Yeshawa waya. 
So yeah, so um, we're here and we need to just, so I think I have two children, mashallah, they're 14 year old boys and I am, <laughs> I am here with them. They could have been born in Kandahar like I was, but they were not. So if we are here, you hear that? That is the sound of chapli kebab, okay? And don't be shy. They have to be made thin, okay? You don't make them too thick. They're not very thick. They get thin and they're crispy and they're crunchy. You never had, oh, of course, you were the, of course you never had a chapalacha. Yeah, you never had a chapalacha. Never, ever, ever. My mom, <laughs> my mom used to chase us. Um, and uh, she, she sometimes caught us, but not that often. But, um, you know, one of the things that I think we all need to be careful of right now when we talk about Afghanistan is nobody has all of the information. Everyone has bits and pieces of information. So, you know, rushing to judgment and making ourselves miserable or um, overly emotional. Like, I get emotional about Afghanistan because I never got to go back, right, and live there, which is where I wanted to live. So when I get upset, it's because it's like, yeah, America is fine and all, but have you ever had fish by the river in Afghanistan? No, I have not. So <laughs> regrets, I have a few, you know. But what I heard was that we should go. Just put on your chadad and uh, take a trip. But a lot of people right now are saying a lot of different things and it's hard to know what to believe. Oh my God, I'm so stuck here with this. And what I choose to believe, oh, I need to put it. Oh, I didn't live in Afghanistan for long enough. Sheila, I left there when I was such a young, young girl um, that I don't have one, but you can ask um, Hamida and Hamayun. A lot of people have gone back or they have spent some more time there that I, than I have. Um, or we know people. The only thing I, well, my favorite place in Afghanistan was our Baguna in Penjwaiye. So it's, um, our Bagh is our, our gardens, right? Our, our uh, orchards. And it had, uh, of course, it had irrigation canals and stuff and um, like little pools and lakes and you could go and you could pick pomegranates off of trees and you know we would play on the roofs of our house and we would fly kites and um, you know it's mostly just the memories of being in Afghanistan. That's what my mom's chapalaka felt like. My mom never gave me chapalaka. Okay, I don't know if you can see the color on this. I'll put this to keep it a little bit. But, um... It gets really brown and crusty, right? This is what you want it to look like. You want it to look crunchy on the outside. Um, and what I have to eat, it, <laughs> there we go. Where is this is some of the high tech stuff here. We're really going all out with the, uh, what's this called? The, uh, the, the video production on this one. Um, hey guys. Tell your friends to subscribe to my YouTube channel because if you subscribe to my channel, I need about 400, 350 more subscribers so that I can actually go live on YouTube. And um, if you watch some of my old videos, we can also maybe eventually get monetized. My hope is that we can send some of that money to Afghanistan, or all of it really, um, and support uh, the people there, um, as well as the refugees and the people who are here. Here's the other thing. I understand this desire to be like, oh, you know, airlift people, save Afghans, bring them here. But, you know, Afghans want to be home. They don't want to be here. They want to be in their homes. So 
keep that in mind when you make those pronouncements um, that it's not the best case scenario, all right? It's, it, it's the worst case that you have to leave your, your homeland. Um, so while it's a nice gesture and sentiment, it's not, it's not what people want. This one is bro breaking. Sometimes you lose some. I lost this one. See, now, if this was not live, you would never see that. You would never have seen that. Because we would have edited that part out. But so what I have to eat this with is um, I have uh, mustache. Well, it's Greek yogurt, but I'm going to make mustache from this, which means I'm going to mix it with mint and lemon and garlic. You guys know how to make that. I have a video. Um, I have leftover rice here that I made the other day. It's just really simple white rice. If you guys want a recipe just to how to make really perfect, super easy white rice, I can teach you how to do that. And I have, of course, I have chicken because you can't eat anything without this stuff. This is the green sauce. It's uh, made with vinegar, if you haven't seen that. I'm not on set for these videos. <laughs> He's later. He's later. Okay, let me get a plate. Um, hey, Drew, did you bring paper towels? Where, oh, I know. We sent Drew out to get paper towels because we don't have any paper towels. Okay, so normally what you do is if you have a house with paper towels, in it, you would put these on paper towel, um, and you can see how nice and brown and crispy that is on both sides. This, my dear friends, is not health food. Um, I did not make cabbage palau yet in any of my videos. I was going to make it today. Somebody asked me to do it, but I went into my freezer. I have no lamb. I have baby carrots. I don't have like the good long carrots that I can cut. It was going to be like too disastrous to do it tonight. Um, it would have been like made with scallops and like day old rice. So it would have been more like club de fried rice or something. Um, this is food that you feed to people that you love, right? In Afghanistan, food is love. It's like that, but I think in most countries, um, the Italians have a huge heritage and history of food and cooking and joy. And um, so this is, for us, you know, f like these heavy fried foods, um, you make with, with love in your heart and you give it to people. This we would usually eat with a, a salad and uh, cucumbers, tomatoes, some sliced onion or green onion, chikne and yogurt, maybe some bread. I told you before um, that you don't have to make everything from scratch, right? So you can buy bread if you can get it locally, wherever you live, buy a whole bunch of it. Say you go into a city where there's an Afghan restaurant and you can buy a bunch of Afghan bread. I'm gonna show you how we keep it. So, and it's frozen, right? So when we want it, you take it out, you put it in the toaster, and you have wonderful, wonderful uh, bread that you can, you know. So you can't get it all the time. When you go someplace and you get it, get it. Have it with your chapati kebab. Have some jalapenos with it. I am going to um, make a one or two more. Um, do you guys have any questions for me about, um, about anything? Um, ask me anything at all. Seriously, anything at all. Where can you buy Afghan bread? Okay, so where do you live, first of all? Um, you can buy it in just about any Persian grocery store, Iranian grocery store, Middle Eastern grocery store. Uh, seek one out. You can... <laughs> I have, I don't have paper towels. I have contractor paper towels. 
Atlanta, you for sure have a Middle Eastern grocery store, okay? Um, they call it Barbary Bread. It is, uh, <laughs> it is, it is very long and narrow. Um, it's not as thin as Lavash. It's a little bit thicker. Maybe one of us can Google for you right now if there's an Afghan grocery in Atlanta that sells Afghan bread. But my suggestion is buy a bunch of it, freeze it. You won't, you'd be like, oh, I wish I had, and you'll have it. So, um, any other questions? You can, um, I have a video um, on, um, yes, it's like naan, yeah. I mean, naan is a word for bread. We call it dudi in Pashto, but yes, naan. Um, it's a little bit different from naan. But the essentials are the same, right? It's flour, water, salt, yeast, and a little bit of oil. Ooh. I just burned myself. Um, so that's, I mean, and I, I think I made a video on naan and it did not come out very well. The bread itself was very, very not good. Um, yeah, cut what you want and refreeze the rest. That's what we do. We break off a little piece when it's frozen and then we refreeze it constantly. I mean, look, we're Afghan. We don't have this idea that like, oh, this goes bad. It goes bad when it smells bad or the whole thing is moldy. Otherwise, you eat it, okay? So you should smell it, look at it. If it looks bad, it's probably bad. If it smells bad, it's bad, but we don't have expiration dates. But my grandmother, God rest her soul, I just show us that we care. She was the cleanest, I mean, she would go by an expiration date. She washed her banana peels. Like literally she would take a banana and she would wash it and then peel it and then give it to you. Same with her onions. She washed everything. The most organized, I mean, seriously, like I don't know when her birthday it was, but she was as Virgo as they come. But yeah, you can definitely refreeze. Um, I mean, anything. <laughs> Anything we but we take leeks like if you can get green onions leeks uh, Chinese um, Chives that we use for bolani for bolani and uh, you cut that up if you have too much and you freeze it And then when you're ready to make some bolani you take it out and you my mom freezes eggplant uh, She freezes rice if she's made too much rice, so we freeze everything What else any other questions? Ask me something. You know, I wanted to go to cooking school. I did not want to go to law school. Was my mother the one that, she was the greatest. She asked me all the questions. Was it my mother the one that taught me how to cook? Yes. My mother was the one. And it's funny because my mother had not cooked when she came to America. So she came here at tw when she was 21, 22. I came with her. I was about a year and a half old and she had never cooked because in Afghanistan I mean women who have any money at all don't cook they have people who cook in the home for them so she learned how to cook through some friends here in America and um, then when I got older unfortunately the Soviets came and then my relatives came so my grandmother came and she was an amazing cook and my other grandmother was an amazing baker and seamstress so I learned a lot from my grandmother and my aunt. And what, what's interesting is that because I was highly educated, you know, I went to law school, I didn't get married right out of high school, people assume that I don't know how to do any of this. So it's sort of fun when people are um, surprised when I, um, I have this channel, for example, right? They're like, oh my God, we didn't know you could like, how did you think I've been eating since I was 19? I haven't lived at home and I didn't have a cook. But it's just the expectation that if you can not cook. Hi, friend. Hi, welcome. I'm so happy you joined us. Um, the expectation is if you don't have to cook, why would you cook? Uh, but I like it. I mean, unless I have nothing in the house to cook and then I'm like, oh my God, do I have to MacGyver this dinner? These are all falling apart.
I made them some of them too thin. You know what? I'm going to finish these up. I wish I could just cut and then go to the next thing like we do when we make Afghan cooks not live. All right, any other questions? Ask me anything. No? I'm going to keep talking. What shall I talk about? Should I talk about Afghanistan? What shall I say about Afghanistan? We have to wait. We have to pray, right? Make dua and pray to whatever God or thing that you believe in or don't believe. Just send out positive vibes, whatever you got going for peace, right? Like we all have an opinion. We all have an idea. All of us sitting here, not in Afghanistan. But what we really need to hope for is for the best for the people in Afghanistan. Like whatever it is that makes them feel safe and uh, happy and able to live their lives to the fullest. That's what we have to wish for. And whenever I get mad online and I, I say things, um, I have to even remind myself, like, this is not about me. I'm here and I'm safe-ish. Um, and uh, I have to respect the choices and the will of the people of Afghanistan, whatever that is. And look, there's going to be many sides to this. There's going to be people that worked with a government that is now considered to be, uh, you know, criminal. And so people will be in harm's way. People will be in danger because of that. And then there will be other people, the ordinary people, who just are going about their business and continue to go about their business, hopefully. The big issue is schools for women and girls, universities, um, and work. Uh, and not, not sending people back into the dark age, not taking the soccer stadium and using it as a place to stone people again. So it's really important that no matter what this next government does, that they don't take the Afghan women and, and girls backwards and the boys, that we don't go back, 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 back. Woo! This is dangerous. I'm not doing a very good job. People should watch this for the chaos. So you can see what happens behind the scenes. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reheat my, my tea and I'm going to drink my tea and just hang out with you guys. I'm going to use tissues to <laughs> clean my counter because otherwise I, I just have these. Man, I didn't even think I was hungry. Now I'm smelling this, and I am. It turns out I'm actually pretty hungry. You're gonna have to move that camera out of the way. Okay. Let me teach you a few words, okay? What's interesting is that there are a lot of different... I learned from um, Halayun's family that they call it a kambach. So those are the two words for this thing, which is a very important thing to have in an Afghan family because you use this, usually not for uh, getting things out of hot oil, but you use it for rice. See, it has the holes in it, and so you can fluff the rice and the, there's no liquid that stays in your... I don't know why they use it, but this is what we use. We use the thing with holes in it for rice, okay? Kaukid or tambach. Okay? Oil is called gore. Gore. That's oil. Okay? We use a lot of gore. Right? And it's one of those interesting things when you think about the food of a culture and Afghan food. I don't think would be considered health food. Yet Afghans in Afghanistan eat Afghan food and they don't, um, they didn't have the diseases, the Western diseases. Um, but when we come here to America and we eat Afghan food, we get them. We get diabetes and a lot of these other, other diseases because of the lifestyle is different here in this country, right? There's not as much activity. 
you have a washing machine, you have a dishwasher, you're not out in the field, you're not gathering all of your children around all the time and herding them around. So, and then on top of that, you also have the Western diet in addition to the Afghan diet. Um, so I just find that, like, I think about how we eat in Afghanistan. And I got in a fight with my dad at one point. I was like, Afghan food is so unhealthy because he's like, Afghan food is the healthiest food in the whole world. Nothing is better than Afghan food. And I was like, it's so unhealthy. We fry everything. And he was like, well, then how come in Afghanistan we didn't have all this cancer and all this diabetes? And all, Although my grandfather had diabetes. Without the clove. Uh, delicious. But that's what's really different about chipley kebab. Um, is it's so moist and tender on the inside. Um, and also, you know, um, one thing that I, we talk a lot about is um, halal food. And, you know, we're not supposed to eat meat that's not halal. Um, and one of the things that I think is interesting about that is that we buy halal meat at, for example, right now at Walmart. But the problem is, is that the second part in the way that the meat is supposed to be killed is probably followed through on in the Walmart brand grocery. It's a great price. It's halal. Your heart it won't be tied. Like your necks will be free <laughs> in the afterlife because you did what you're supposed to do. But the first half of it, which is the humane raising and treatment of the animal, I think is forgotten a lot of the time in that. So um, it's very, very expensive to buy um, organic, um, pasture raised, humanely treated meat that is also halal kill. Uh, it's a very difficult thing. Um, and it shouldn't be that hard to just raise animals well. And then murder them so we can eat them. That should be a little bit cheaper to have. So, you know, it's good though. It's good, folks. Anybody have any questions? Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate it. I really do. It means a lot to me to be able to just talk and cook food. I'm going to, oh, I don't have a cup. I need a cup. You get a cup. This kitchen was uh, a COVID endeavor. You know, people were busy building and so we did this kitchen during COVID. Oh, here's the other thing I find it really hard to find is one of these things. These little tiny strainers are almost impossible to find. Um, when is my next live? I never, I never know when they are. Um, they just sometimes when the mood strikes me, but we will definitely let you know and we'll plan it in advance. But also remember, please subscribe to me on YouTube. It's Afghan cooks. I think Justin just put the link in the chat. If he could put the link in the chat, because we can't do a mobile live on YouTube until we hit a thousand subscribers and we're close, but we're not there yet. So subscribe, make up. Yeah. The Indian, Ooh, the Indian store has some of these strainers. Yeah, this is, I mean, sometimes it goes missing and I am just like, why did you take my strainer? Now, we don't use uh, strainers for um, tea when we have loose tea. We just let it settle to the bottom. So. So subscribe to my channel, please, so that we can hit that thousand subscriber mark so that we can do YouTube lives and we don't have to do them on Facebook. Are all my relatives in the U.S.? No, not all of them. Um, some of them are still in, are in Kabul because they worked for the government and that's pretty frightening for us right now. Um, thank you for subscribing. Uh, and others are in Kandahar and um, the ones in Kandahar say it's fine. Um, but then again, Kandahar has been used to the Taliban being around for a long time and they've learned how to function with them and live with them, uh, in their communities. So, um, 
you know, we all have our theories about what happened in Afghanistan. I think that we know that uh, Trump uh, basically signed Afghanistan away to the Taliban. We don't know what Russia has to do with it. We think there's something that something's up with Russia as well. But at the end of the day, none of that matters. None of the finger pointing matters. None of the blame matters. The only thing that matters is that the people that we love and that we care about are safe and happy and that they are able to live their lives and raise their children and cook chipley kebab and, you know, drink their chai um, and and have a, a the same opportunities for love and life and happiness that we ostensibly have here in America. And I say ostensibly because this is a country where we uh, make it against the law to mandate masks in schools. Um, it's a country where um, we um, allow uh, black Americans to be shot in the streets and then we let uh, police get away with it um, because it's the law. This is a country where we have insisted that it is better to pay for your own health care than have the government <laughs> provide it for you. Um, it's a country where we have lied to everyone who is oppressed, uh, whether it's poor white people or um, wealthy immigrants, and have told them that they too can be part of this great American dream as long as they take the side of the oppressors. And I don't, I think that we need to wake up from that and to see that um, it's our job to make sure that everyone is able to live their best life, right? Let's just say like, you know, YOLO, I guess is what the kids say. My kids will think I'm so cringe. Um, but we we need to make sure that we just keep fighting, right? Keep fighting the good fight against injustice, which this country is rife with. Um, and, uh, you know, I'll probably cry some more later, but you guys made tonight pretty good for me. And I, um, I thank you. I really do thank you to my friends who came here today and watched me make food and distracted me for a bit. Um, uh, we will post the recipe on Afghan cooks. We will. And you can make chipley kebab and not, not make it. I don't know what I'm saying. See, this is all the stuff that we would edit out. No, you would never hear any of this. All my rambling and my singing. Listen to your heart when it's calling for you. Listen to your heart. Bye.